the Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Today on the Jesse Blake Sports Report, we are going to be joined by Julian McKenzie to talk about Bill Peters being named the head coach of the Lethbridge Hurricanes. And then we are going to get into what's happening, whether it is your first time here or your last time here or somewhere far in between. Thank you for being here. Let's get into the show. We are being joined now by Julian McKenzie of the Chris Johnston Show on SDPN and of The Athletic covering the Calgary Flames and their day-to-day operations. How are you doing, Julian? I'm doing okay. Uh, Just enjoying a a quiet Thursday. Uh, (laughs) I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I, I, I shouldn't have mentioned the date. My bad. It's all, it's all right. Um, I think my day has been a lot less eventful than yours uh, because Bill Peters kind of rocked your world for the last 24 hours. And for those people who don't know, uh, Julian McKenzie wrote a terrific article in The Athletic today about Bill Peters being named the new head coach of the Lethbridge Hurricanes of the WHL. And this is an important story because the last time we heard of Bill Peters, he was resigning from his role as head coach of the Calgary Flames um, in in a disgraced matter because of uh, his history with Akima Lou. And I want to start with all of the backstory and how we got here. So, Julian, you cover the Calgary Flames now, but you weren't covering them back then. But you're very familiar with the ongoings of the story. So can you explain why Bill Peters has been out of hockey for so long and what happened with him at the end of his tenure with the Calgary Flames and Akeem Alou? Essentially what had happened was, is that um, it had been found out after Akeem Alou tweeted about this about four years ago, that an incident between the two men occurred when they were both with uh, the Rockford Ice Hogs of the American Hockey League, in which uh, Akeem Alou, uh, I believe, was in the locker room uh, playing music and Bill Peters proceeded to disapprove of his choices of music by using the N word on a number of occasions. And that story went unheard of. Uh, Akeem, I believe also said that uh, Bill had written a letter basically demanding that he get sent down to the ECHL and Akeem associates uh, puts a lot of blame on, on Bill when it comes to his own career and how it went. Um, but essentially that story had been unheard of for years until, uh, Akeem took to Twitter in 2019 and revealed that story. And as eventually after that story was found out, uh, Bill Peters was led to, had to resign from his position as head coach of the Calgary Flames, uh, in terms of coaching jobs he's had since then, uh, I know he spent the last two years, uh, coaching for a KHL team in Russia and then about a couple weeks ago, maybe no more than a week, uh, a uh, opportunity for him surfaced to coach the Lethbridge Hurricanes of the Western Hockey League. And uh, some conversations were had. And ultimately, we are where we're at today, where he is leading training camp with the Hurricanes as their head coach. Wow. And so you were at the press conference yesterday in Lethbridge when it, they unveiled the the Hurricanes unveiled Bill Peters as their new head coach. When did you find out mm-hmm. about the official uh, press conference happening that they were going to announce him as head coach? Like, was it just instant? You had to make the drive or was this like a week lead up that you had? So um, I believe the first person who reported on this period as a as a journalist who I'm not sure if they're local, but Greg Drennan is their name. And this is important because uh, I think it was Tuesday night at this point when I was just minding my business, I was writing something else. And Greg Wyshynski from ESPN had said that, that that was the person who had written that Bill Peters has a chance at this Lethbridge job. And people were talking about it. And I figured, okay, since Greg is is amplifying this, I should probably – see if this is true and and i have uh i reached out to someone from the league and reached and uh they were able to uh tell me that it was happening and uh another one of my colleagues at the athletic uh had also heard from other sources that this was happening and it was like pretty late at night and i i think my editor was already fast asleep when this was happening so i was i was trying to get in touch with them and nothing had happened so it just got to a point where I was I was just thinking, OK, am I going to have to make this drive to Lethbridge, which is like at least two hours south of Calgary? And 
Mm-hmm. I did have a moment in my bed, waking up the next morning, thinking, okay, should I do this? I'm dead tired. But I ultimately ended up making the drive, and I, I just went to this press conference. And uh, I know Salon Valji from TSM was there. Sportsnet had some representation. There are a few other local media outlets there, too. But, um, yeah, I had heard about the night before, but I had heard people say that they had heard about it the morning of, and then they just made the drive down to Lethbridge for the press conference. It was a very hectic set of hours, whether you heard late at night or early the next day. Yeah, no, that's, I was going to say Tuesday of this week. Like it was literally from Tuesday night, you wake up Wednesday morning, you're making a two hour drive to go watch this press conference. Like that's intense. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, after the press conference, I was just like, all right, I have an idea. I'm going to drive back. And uh, yeah, I just it just that whole morning, early afternoon was just a bit busy. Um, but uh, yeah, I just thought it was an important story that had to be uh, written about considering yeah. the events. And, and following the timeline of events here, so you get to the press conference and you wrote in, in your article about half an hour before is when Akimalu tweeted and he, he tweeted uh, information. I'm going to read it in verbatim here, but uh, did you know that his mm-hmm. tweets were coming about his what had happened in the last week involving him and Bill Peters and him reaching out to apologize? So Did there had you know been reports that that was coming? from the yeah. Tuesday night. So from the Tuesday night, there had been reports going around uh, that uh, Akeem had heard that Bill was trying to apologize through a third-party broker, which ended up being this uh, current NHL head coach. And then the tweet that he put out about half an hour before the press conference started basically outlined what, he had, what was said in those reports, that mm-hmm. a current NHL coach – tried to reach out to him more or less to curry some kind of a te- of apology uh, from Bill in order to get it to, to Akeem and Akeem posted what he had said in, in exchange. Um, yeah. Like I remember being at that presser and just trying to just get myself ready. And then one of the cameramen uh, just like, I know from sports that he just got my attention. He was like, did you see the tweet from Akeem? And like I saw it, and I was like, "Oh boy, okay." And then I saw the timestamp, and I saw how long it had been since he had put it up. And then about thirty minutes later, Bill and um, members of uh, the Hurricanes management and the WHL commissioner were present, and they basically said what they had to say. Wow! So I'm going to read the the statement that Akeem tweeted out uh, in full here. So he says. This is it's a it's a screen grab of a notes app where he sent a text message back to the coach who had reached out to kind of brokerage uh, the apology from Bill Peters. So he's responding to the head coach here. And he said, thanks for reaching out and trying to mend the situation. I also really appreciate the kind words. They mean a lot. I don't feel that I have anything to say to Bill at this point. It has been 13 years since the incident happened and four since it's become public. I'm curious as to why he wants to apologize now. Most folks don't know the backstory of all that transpired. After the incident happened, instead of apologizing, he did everything in his power to blackball me in the game for over a decade. He even went as far as to write a letter to Chicago management at the time stating it was either me or him, further alienating me from all of management. That Chicago team produced five NHL GMs. Dale Talon, uh, Kevin Shovel Dayoff, Mark Bergevin, Stan Bowman, and Rick Dudley. I have a lot of love for Rick. That's a large chunk of the league that that believed I was a bad kid slash person without ever knowing what truly happened because I kept it to myself because I knew I had to suck it up to have any sort of career. It's something I could never recover from, and hockey was everything to me and my family. He continues, I am an immigrant to this country and grew up with nothing. I came from the inner city and grew up on welfare and government housing. It was what I used to to provide for my family, and one man stole that from me. At the time of the incident, I was leading that team in scoring as the youngest player on the team. He called me the N-word, and instead of apologizing at the time, he doubled down and sent me to the East Coast League. I went through a tremendously dark time throughout this whole process. He would berate and embarrass me endlessly in front of the whole team on a daily basis. Truth be told, if I never said anything, he would still be coaching in the NHL. I am all for second chances, but only if they are sincere. I've talked to some of the fellas about you and everything, 
and everyone had amazing things to say. Trevor Daly to Nazem to Wayne to Joel. Those are guys I really have a lot of respect for. So I know you're doing this for the right reasons. Thanks and be well. And I think Akeem realized that the coach who reached out to kind of brokerage the apology wasn't in the wrong here. Like he wasn't the the evil one in the situation. So I like that he included that that little end piece there. But yeah, so that that dropped into your lap through a cameraman, Julian, while you're sitting there waiting for uh, Peters to take the podium. And then uh, the GM, Peter Anholt, the GM of the Leftbridge uh, Hurricanes, takes the stage. Um, he has some words, and then he introduces Bill Peters, who begins his opening statement with a public apology to Akeem. And how did this go over in the room, Julian? Because you outlined your feelings and the feeling of the room at the time when he began his opening statement with an apology. He didn't just apologize. He said this was going to be hard to do. He was silent and he he, he was crying. I mean, mm -hmm. I was watching that. And I was like, okay, he he's he seems to be emotional. But at the same time, knowing that that tweet is out there saying that you didn't really go to him to apologize and then you're doing this, it rings very hollow. And I, I had to tweet that out there because I know if I just say, okay, he is apologetic and he's sorry. First, we had gotten a whole bunch of statements from the league, from Bill Peters, out basically uh, outlining the process that he had gone through to get to this point. And Bill, in his own personal statement, was trying to say that he was sorry. He was trying to come across as if it was a personal statement, but it did also read a bit like someone else had written it. But that's a whole other thing in itself. In terms of how it went over in the room, um, I didn't get the sense that everybody I know for me, I didn't necessarily think he was being genuine with all of that. I don't know when it comes to everybody else. I know there were some some fans and season ticket holders who were there. And before he before he goes through all that, he gets the jersey. And there's some canned applause from everybody. Like, I don't I don't know if, if people could look at that whole thing, uh, him speaking to the media and and act like like he's crying or at least i'm not going to try to say that he was faking any of that but i just it just didn't go over well for me and it just rang very hollow and i don't know how anyone can look at that particular situation and say that he comes across as genuine especially when you add that extra context of him not speaking to uh akeem uh personally when you mm -hmm. add the context of the league not going to akeem and basically saying that it was basically Sorry, I should stop saying basically, but it was the responsibility of Bill Peters to do this. And they just said, all right, well, you, you'll do it on your own time, but you could still have this job. And of course, the team and, and Peter Anaholt, who you mentioned there, the GM, he has a relationship with with Bill dating back when they were both coaches in, in the WHL together. So I I have a hard time thinking that Bill, even if he tried his darndest, was genuinely being genuine. I, I don't really believe him, and I don't necessarily think a lot of people in that room felt that way. But I think you'd have to take a poll of a, of a lot of those reporters and people personally. But I know for myself and a few other media members, we I don't think we were taking that to. I don't. I I think the kids would say cap, I guess, but like it's it's not. Nah, it was not a good situation. I think, mm -hmm. and because what it comes down to is the incident with Akeem it becoming public and and him voicing his opinions about everything and then him leaving the Calgary Flames all of that happened in 2019 2019 mm -hmm. was was 4 years ago now there was plenty of time between 2019 and 2023 to apologize to reach out to him and only when a new opportunity came up with, through one of his old friends Peter Peter Anholt the GM uh, that's the only time when Bill Peters decided to reach out and make amends. And I don't know how you look at that situation any other way as he now has to become, he now has to enter back into the public sphere and he has to answer questions. So he's going to try and, and get an apology or reach out to Akeem and, and offer an apology uh, because he has to go to a podium and talk about it. So he tried to do that beforehand. I'm I'm assuming he tried to do that beforehand because he knows he has to address it. And if he if there was some genuine, I'm not I don't know if he's genuinely sorry or not, but I would think if you are genuinely sorry within those four years, that's enough time to 
apologize to the man you hurt so much. Four years. I keep hearing I keep hearing and seeing people say this man had four years. This man had four years to do this. We heard about this four years ago. He had 13 years. We as a society, as a hockey world, we heard about this story four years ago because Akeem Alou went on Twitter one night and said, I'm going to talk about this. That's why the number four keeps popping up. Mm-hmm. In reality, he had about 13 years. And he mentioned it in his in his in this tweet. And near the end, he said, Well, if I didn't do what I did, no one would have heard this story. This might have been something where let's be truthful here. This might have totally been a story where we're hanging out in the CJ show group chat, and Steve Dangle, because of whatever contacts he has in the O or wherever else, would have heard some story through somebody that Bill did this, and it would have just been in the group chat, and maybe there's a way to report on that. I don't know, but it would have been one of those hearsay stories that you hear about from people here and there, and who knows if that would have been reported. Akeem Alou bringing up that story is the only reason why we have seen the domino effect we've seen when it comes to Akeem and everything he's done with the HDA since, and why Bill Peters is on the trajectory that he is on right now. This could have been very different if Bill Peters, in the last 13 years, not four, took it upon himself to apologize. And I I see the statements where he has done this work with a, a, a consulting group that looks to make organizations more diverse. He takes some college course on diversity and inclusion during his media availability. He's able to mention all the isms, the racism, the sexism. All the isms as and says, hey, you know what? Those are those are talking points, but they ring so hollow. They they don't have as much weight and meaning if you fail to apologize to the person that you hurt. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I have time for a person who is willing to do all this stuff and beat around the bush while skipping the most crucial step of the quote unquote rehabilitation process. And that's what Bill Peters did, and he was green-lighted by the Lethbridge Hurricanes and the Western Hockey League in that process because they didn't feel he needed to do that either. Yeah, the uh, the work that they said he did, you mentioned the organization. So he Bill Peters entered an agreement with the WHL, the league as a whole, the Hurricanes, and Shades of Humanity to go through diversity and equity training for the next two years. So, so Peter, Peter Anholt, the GM, he was up there and he says, Bill Peters, he's, he's done the work. He's been doing the work for two years. He has a psychotherapist and he's going to continue the work with through shades of humanity and his, his agreement with the league. And that's what they spoke about this, this training that he's going to go through. But if, if he's unwilling to uh, have his victim understand, if he's unwilling to understand the pain that he put his victim through and apologize from yeah, you're right. It's the 13 years. It's the day after he he yelled at him and used the N word for the music. As soon as that happened, from that minute onwards until today, like that's when the apology should have been issued. And if that can't happen, we that had cell phones gesture, in 2009 and 2010. We right. had emails in 2009, 2010. We had you could call somebody. You could you could write letters. There are so many different things he could have done. Well, mind you, he wrote a letter for something completely different. But like I, I, 13 years is a long time. And then to take to take all that time and then wait until about a week before you should be getting this opportunity to coach in North America again. And you go through somebody else to try to make that happen. Is that not crap? Is that that's BS. If we all went if we all went through something heinous in our lives at the hands of somebody else and someone tried to apologize the way that Bill Peters did, we'd all be up in arms about it. I know there are a lot of people who will, he will watch this and will be like, you guys aren't giving him that second chance he deserves. Those people, those people who are thinking of doing that, put yourselves in the shoes of Akeem Alou and don't even necessarily think about that particular situation. Think about something happening to you and someone taking 13 years to apologize, and when they do it, it's – when they're on the verge of doing something cool and they want to clear that up and they're trying to get somebody else to work as a third party. Like I, I really implore people who will listen to this podcast 
I implore you to put yourself in Akima Lu's shoes, and you don't even have to recreate the scenario that happened to him. Just think of something bad that could happen, and someone taking 13 years to apologize to you, and when they do, it happens when they're on the verge of having something significant happen, like a big career change, and they basically use someone else to try to get an apology through. Like, put yourself in their shoes and think about that. He's using Akima Lu and hoping to get that I forgive you to boost his next step in his career. He's trying to get that. Yeah. He's trying to use Akeem to, to bolster himself. Like, it's not about the apology. It's about furthering his career and getting back into the safe space of, hey, everybody respects Bill Peters again. You know, he's trying to use him in the situation. And it's it's interesting you bring up, like, okay, why does this matter? Like, it, it, who cares what he did? And he's just trying to be a head coach. But you think about he's coaching 15 to 20-year-olds. That, that's what the WHL is. That, that's, who, that's the age range you're allowed to compete in the WHL. And he's, he mm-hmm. wasn't fit to lead the Calgary Flames because of this incident. And you say, okay, his character isn't good to lead this group of players. And now he's getting into a situation where he's, he's teaching young boys how to grow up and how to play hockey and teamwork and camaraderie and everything, all of the off ice stuff. And his character hasn't changed. So it, it just, it's so blatant how it's his friend who's giving him a shot and not anything to do with Bill Peters earning this based on uh, his character changing or him being a person who should be in charge of this group of young boys in this very important step in their evolution of life. Jesse, Jesse, can I ask you a question? Sure. Let's say you are in that age range of 15 to 20. You're a talented hockey player and an opportunity comes where you're in the dub and you get sent to Lethbridge and Bill Peters is your coach. How do you feel about that? I would be so incredibly uncomfortable every single day I walk into that locker room, especially as as a black man, like it's even it's tenfold. You know, like there's there's no escaping it. You know what this man is capable of. You know what he's done in the past. And you know that he has done, I would say, insignificant work to remedy that remedy his his public image and and remedy what he's done to another person. So I I wouldn't respect him as my head coach and I would be scared. Especially as a young kid, as if I'm 16, 17, I would be absolutely terrified every day going to play for this guy. Don't don't you think, like, first off, I really appreciate you answering that question as honestly as you did. Don't you think that if you feel that way and you're not in the league, but I have a hard time thinking that the players of color in the WHL wouldn't have a similar viewpoint? And if you're in charge of how things run in your league, don't you think it makes sense to hear from those people before you let a a man like Bill Peters back into your league? That just makes sense to me. But maybe I'm a crazy person. I don't know. That just makes sense to me. Yeah, so this is another layer of the story in that they've known for... They said about a week now. It was a, it was a sudden hiring because their coach resigned. The previous coach of the Lethbridge Hurricanes resigned three weeks ago. So it was a quick turnaround yes. to, for for this position and to bring Bill Peters in. So they knew about a week ago that they were going to make this this hiring. And in that week, they never contacted Akeem. Nobody from the league or nobody from Lethbridge decided to talk to him and see if what they thought what he thought about this signing. Like they basically just rushed through it. I know the the commissioner was trying to say that they spoke. I don't remember specifically how they worded it, but nowhere in his discourse did he say they spoke to other players about mm-hmm. it. And they definitely did not speak to Akeem about it. And that again, that is a massive step missed in all of this. All that they all that so they could bring back Bill Peters. That's essentially what this is. And they felt they could overlook that step. And I'm sorry, but I don't think this person is truly worth of. And I mean, it also ultimately it's not up to me because I'm not the victim in this situation. It's it's, it's Akeem who yep. is the victim, and victims in in those situations should be the but, one. But Julian, to Julian, Mister Forgiveness, we've, but we've heard yeah. from Akeem, like that's we, that's yeah, the like, thing. Come, like come we, on. we've heard from him, and we know what happened. <laughs> like we we know that <laughs> the apology wasn't sincere, and he tried to do it four years later after it became public. Like 
that's that's why I don't think there's it's not really a gray area with this issue. It seems to me very black and white. No, you're right. It is very black and white, and not to go that far, but when you consider that Akeem has what he has out there, and we know it's not genuine, but the they're trying to make it seem as if it is anyway. Bill and the team in the league. They're trying to make people look like idiots. And I don't like being made to look like an idiot. The one one thing that really bothered me from that press conference, Jesse, mm -hmm. um, from the individual um, scrums that we had, I remember trying to ask Bill a question about which, like what players of color or people of color has he spoken to in his process uh, to get to where he's at. And I, I realized I could have asked that question a little bit better. If you go back on the YouTube video, you can hear me try to stumble through it. And he does say yes. And I'm like, well, what are those conversations like? And he's saying that he's heard from all these people. And then he takes a moment and he says, I have a story for you if you'd like to hear it. And he basically starts retelling the events of the night Wade Simmons had that banana thrown at him oh, during gosh. that preseason game. But what really was insulting about it was that the fact that he was stumbling through these details as if it was this completely new thing that no one had ever heard about. And like right. that to me just felt like between that the 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 crying at the beginning of the press conference, mm -hmm. uh, his explanations about why Akeem had not heard from him, it felt like one of those situations to me where they were trying to take me for a fool. They were trying to take a whole bunch of people in that room for idiots and fools and just think, all right, well, he's going to be all good and no one has to make this into a big deal. And because of how hockey is, where it's a predominantly white sport, and the powers that be feel that race doesn't have to be this big deal. They felt they could get away with it. And maybe that's why I feel so angry about this story. Maybe that's why I wrote that call in the way that I did. Because, you know, I, I love the sport dearly. But I don't like being made to look like an idiot. And I felt like that leaving that arena and that press room. And I I don't like feeling that way. I was, I was made to feel like an idiot. And they were trying to feed me a whole bunch of stuff about how Bill Peters is 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 for the better now because he went through all of these different courses and whatnot in order to get to that point. When we all know he didn't do what he needed to do, which is apologize to Akeem Alou. Mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a great place to leave it. Uh, this is a pretty heavy show. Uh, next time I'll bring you on for something much more much more joyful. Maybe we'll do some predictions for the season or something fun. We'll do a. You little know what's actually funny? I wanted to. You know what's funny? At the end of the show, I wanted to be yeah. like, "Hey, can you please put me on a more fun podcast?" <laughs> I would. I. You know what? I would much rather. I would much rather be on one of your shows where you yeah. say something completely ridiculous and I just yell at you the whole thirty minutes because at least that's fun. That's yeah. at least a fun show. I don't like the fact that we had to spend this last how many minutes talking about a guy who doesn't deserve to have an opportunity as 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 just just the fact that that's out there. Like I, I hated having to, to do this. I understand that we have to talk about these stories and and it sucks that you and I have to be in this position where we have to talk about this. But yeah. if we don't talk about it, who's going to talk about it? Exactly. And and what these conversations that we're having, what we're trying to do is we're trying to further the game and the, the ethos that hockey is for everyone. And when these incidents come up and they they try and reinforce that it's not, there needs to be pushback. You know, that that's the only Absolutely. way to move forward is if there's pushback. So I really appreciate you coming on here uh, after your wild 48 hours and that long drive both ways, four hours total, and then writing that article and then doing as many radio hits as you did today. I really appreciate you uh, putting yourself through all of that and the extra effort you put into put it, doing great work and furthering the game of hockey that we all love and we want everybody to be a participant in. So I appreciate you, Julian. Thank you. I appreciate you as well, and thank you so much for for having me on uh, your show. It's always a it's always a good time to. In all seriousness, it's always great to be on your show with you, buddy. So thank where, you. Where where did the Flames finish this season? In the playoffs? Out of the playoffs? That might be for the prediction show, my man. I need I need more time. <laughs> all right, all right, time. save I, it. I need to think about this. I need to think about this. There are people killing me already about about my takes on that. I need to think about this. Okay, okay. I'll, we'll save it for the next one. I'll have you on in a couple weeks, and we'll do a little preseason show. That's Julian McKenzie of the Chris Johnson Show and The Athletic. Thank you guys for listening. 
All right, now for a quick edition of What's Happening, where I tell you what's happening on SDPN, and you tell me what's happening in your life through some sort of interaction, whether it be on Twitter or on my DMs on Instagram or on our Discord server. Go to sdpn.ca and join us on Discord. Let's start with a little SDPN news. Noxie and Cax return on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, the day after Labor Day, if you're in a region that has Labor Day. Noxie and Cax are coming back with a brand new episode to talk about the new women's league, the PWHL that is launching in January. They're going to have all the information you need. Check that out on Tuesday. And now for you, I want to shout out J Money, a longtime listener to many of our SDPN shows, particularly particularly the CJ show, but today you interacted with me a little bit on Twitter. So I want to shout out at Insider J Money, who, when I asked for your starting six of a current day Team North America, he put together a full Team North America team. And I want to read it out for you and put it on the screen here. So if you don't remember, Team North America was a part of the 2016 World Cup. The 2016 World Cup that the NHL put on was a little wonky. They had a team sum of Europe amongst the countries that weren't represented, but players from Europe. And also a Team North America comprised of under 23-year-olds who are either from Canada or the United States who are not on the Canada or American teams that were also in the World Cup tournament. So Team North America was a very unique team that only happened at this one World Cup event that the NHL put on in 2016. And on that team was uh, Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews and every other under-23 star that uh, the league eventually birthed. So I want to know, what would a 2023 team look like if we got to pick all of the stars of the under-23-year-olds from Canada to the U.S.? What would that team look like? And as for your starting six, but insider J Money went above and beyond and put together the entire lineup. The first line is centered by Jack Hughes and on the wings, Kachuk and Caulfield. Second line, Zegris, Beniers, Bedard, Boldy, Cousins, Mercer, Kent Johnson, McTavish, and Wyatt Johnson on the fourth line. And then the, the scratch is uh, Barrett Hayton. On D, Owen Power, Quinn Hughes, Keandre Miller, Noah Dobson, Jake Sanderson, Mr. Bouchard, and Mr. Byram rounding out the sixth and seventh defensemen. And then in goal, we got Spencer Knight and Dustin Wolf. Uh, some extras might be Fantilli, Addison, and Levi. That is a really good Team North America 2023 edition. Well done, J Money. That's it for what's happening. That is it for the show today. I will see you again bright and early Sunday night slash Monday morning, depending on when you consume the podcast. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here listening to the Jesse Blake Sports Report right now, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. If you really like the show, hit like and subscribe on our YouTube channel at STPN or like the podcast on your favorite podcast app and give it a five-star rating and uh, subscribe to the channel as well. So, all right, that's it for me today. Good night from Toronto. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake, powered by Sports Interaction. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.